All right, our next talk is by uh, Daniel Hellstrom from Cobham uh, Advanced Electronics Solutions. Uh, his talk is entitled Space Computing, Latest News and Roadmap. Daniel. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Klaus, for uh, a nice presentation. Uh, so uh, I'm from Cobham Geisler in Sweden, uh, and I'm, uh, I would like to uh, share uh, the latest news and roadmap of our uh, space computing offering. Uh, next slide, please. So uh, a bit of overview, uh, some uh, information on our uh, existing process models, how to evaluate uh, the new ones and uh, and uh, about the ecosystem, software ecosystem and updates there. And uh, then I will talk a bit about the processor model and uh, also component roadmaps. Next, please. Next, please. So um, we, uh, um, our main product is the GRLib uh, uh, IP library. And the main uh, IP uh, being the processor, Spark and, and RISC-5 uh, processors, uh, Leon and, and NOAA 5. So uh, we also uh, uh, use that IP library to develop uh, Red Hard fault tolerant components for space, well, aerospace, uh, where um, those components can uh, be used by custom boards uh, for flight uh, DPUs. Uh, for example, uh, we provide uh, development boards where you can evaluate and uh, run software uh, on, uh, on the development boards. Um, and there are also FPGA development boards where you can take our GLib IP library and put them on that uh, board. And then um, also we provide simulators and debuggers and uh, for the PC uh, where we can simulate applications, uh, Leon or applications, for example, without modif modifying them. We also uh, uh, support compilers based on GCC and LVM and operating systems. Uh, that is uh, target software. Uh, it's not only limited to operating systems. There is also device drivers and uh, bootloaders and so on. Uh, but that's uh, it's not only limited to what Cobham Geisler provides. Of course, there's a uh, other uh, partners and, and uh, other vendors of uh, software like uh, OER, having a presentation yesterday, for example, Wind River, Cisco, Infantis, etc. Next, please. So the IP library <clears throat> comes in different versions. Uh, there's a GPL open source version uh, out. If you follow that link, you can download that. And from there, you can uh, design a system on ship and based on Leon 3 or Leon 5 or Noble 5 processor to select that. And then uh, you can take a couple of um, uh, peripheral components and put together a stock using that. But there are also commercial versions and full tolerant versions where you can get access to more IPs and uh, other configurations of those IPs. And also uh, there are full tolerant uh, implementations. Next, please. So this is basically the flow that I just mentioned that uh, if you design a, a, a processor component, you select either Spark or RISC-V, and then you select a set of peripherals. And then uh, you might want to add your own IPs in there if, you, if you're targeting, uh, um, targeting a custom uh, SOC for FPJ, for example, or Silicon. So we've used that flow to create uh, general purpose um, processors, which we, which are listed there, UT700, for example, uh, 712 dual core or, or quad core 740. Of course, you could also um, develop uh, non-processor solutions as well. Uh, we help customers uh, doing either part of the design flow or we can also take on uh, full development and uh, design IPs as well. Next, please. So this is our uh, uh, dual-core processor called GR712RC. It's a dual-core Leon 3 with the L1 cache, and uh, they share a common AMBA bus. 
where uh, there's a memory controller interfacing to SRAM or SRAM or PROM such as MRAM. And uh, it's a fault tolerant design. Um, so there are several IPs that are fault tolerant and also the main components processor and memory controller checking all the instructions uh, being read in and, and the execution results and so on. Uh, there is a debug support unit to allow the processor to be controlled, single stepped or debugged uh, uh, through the PC. Uh, there are numerous of different interfaces, but uh, we, our components um, are targeting aerospace. So there's a, uh, those interfaces are, um, uh, well, interfaces common in space like 1553 and space wire and can and so on. Thank you, next please. Uh, then the 740, it's a quad core. It's a newer, um, newer component that is based, well, manufactured in uh, by ST Microelectronics using a 65 nanometer technology. So it runs at uh, 250 megahertz. It is uh, a slightly different architecture than the other one. Uh, even though they, the processor shared a bus, the bus is much wider, it's a 128 bit bus. So the throughput is much uh, lower, well, higher. And there's um, L2 cache before reaching the memory controller offloading the memory interface which is a SDRAM in this case. Uh, there are more IOs than the other one. Uh, there, are, uh, there is, for example, a Spaceway router with eight Spaceway ports externally and internally four AMBA ports. And there's a PCI um, target and initiator as well. And there's uh, well a lot of other IOs as well. Next, please. Our most recent component is uh, the, what we call a microcontroller uh, because it is, uh, you can operate it without having external memory such as SRAM or SDRAM. Uh, even though you can interface SRAM or a PROM memory, you, uh, you a parallel uh, interface like that, uh, you don't have to do that uh, because it has an on-ship memory next uh, to the Leon 3, it's a title couple memory to make it easier with uh, instruction uh, timing analysis and so on, because you have a fixed timing to the memory. Uh, and uh, uh, the PROM, uh, as I said, doesn't have to be parallel. You can use the on-ship bootloader to read out the first instructions or application instructions and data from uh, from I square C memory or SPI memory or so. so um, there's also a, a set of interfaces and a and a, a pin multiplex so to to select which interfaces to to use. And it's a mixed signal signal ASIC which allows you to have ADC and DAC uh, integrated. Uh, well, you can use that that is an integrated on the ship. Next, please. Uh, this is a map of where we are, what we know, uh, in the where the Leon devices are in the solar system. I'm sure there are more places that we don't know of. And uh, as uh, Klaus mentioned, the Plato mission, for example, had several Leons. So, uh, yeah. Okay. Next slide, please. Uh, next slide again. So the, the previous slide was basically to, to tell you about the, the flight heritage. And uh, most of those devices were based on this IP, the Leon 3 fault tolerant IP. So it's a fault tolerant, uh, has a lot of flight heritage. It's manufactured by ourselves in our components and by other customers in uh, users in, in uh, both uh, specific FPGA designs and, on, uh, and in silicon. So, um, this is a single issue pipeline um, and uh, well, it has a multiplier and divider and so on, uh, and MMU support and the caches and so on. Um, next, please. Next, please. So now we come to the newer development. So after Leon 3, we developed the Leon 4 for the 740. Uh, which uh, the main focus was to provide more uh, more data 
uh, well, more performance basically. And the Leon 5 is an, uh, well, we take it for a step where we, uh, again, um, we uh, target uh, performance. So this time, this is the first Leon that is a dual issue machine. So in theory, we could, uh, could get uh, a double performance, but it, of course it depends on the instruction sequence and so on. We are also uh, developing uh, virtualization support in hardware, which uh, personally for the software perspective, I, I, uh, I really look forward to. And uh, uh, well, it, but still it is a 32 bit uh, Spark processor. Okay, next slide, please. Um, the main advantage in, in that being a Spark 32 is that the existing software, uh, flight software and software ecosystem uh, runs on that unmodified basically. And you still get the higher uh, computational performance than in the past, even if you move from the Leon 4 or from the Leon 3. So, um, and it's also using the well-proved uh, proven fault tolerance approach that we've used now in, in, uh, in many devices. So that's good. Um, now, if you use the Leon 5, then you will see that it's not only the Leon 5 um, IP, it is uh, it's also put into a building block to allow you to instantiate it easier with a, uh, a SOC um, uh, structure around it. That's what the figure tried to depict. Next slide, please. So I won't go into all the details, but uh, the, the pipeline is one, uh, one step larger, uh, further, deeper. And uh, we've improved the branch predictor and uh, there's new FPG, FPU options. And also the FPU uh, supports denormalized numbers, which is an improvement since before. And uh, you can have configure it to use different bus widths uh, and so on. Uh, and you can follow that link for more information. Uh, next, please. Um, in December, we released the latest version of this IP, and uh, there are pre built bitstreams for uh, two different boards from the microchip, the Polifier Splash Kit, for example, or from Silings, the KCU 105. So you can dial download that from our homepage if you go to those links and try it out. And GRMON, our hardware debugger, works uh, without the license. Uh, you can well, download software and, and control that board. Okay, thank you. Next slide. Uh, okay, now there's the new old five, yeah. So uh, we now call us ourselves a multi-architecture company. And by that, we mean that we, we're not only focusing on Spark, we're also uh, developing our RISC V processor, which we call uh, NOAA V. Uh, similar to Spark in many, uh, many areas when it comes to openness. I mean, Spark is, uh, has always been an open architecture with an open instruction set and no license fees, etc. cetera. Uh, same goes for RISC V, so we like it a lot. Uh, um, and it also specifies other uh, parts uh, of the of SOC, like interrupt controller, et cetera, and debug specification around that. Next, please. So our uh, NOAA 5 processor is uh, both 32 and 64, depending on the configuration. So with this, we can reach uh, uh, the 64-bit uh, processor market as well. It's similar to Leon 5 in the, in the performance being a dual issue machine. Uh, we also target fault tolerance with this, so um, um, it will be able to reuse the software ecosystem uh, um, uh, from us, even though it's a new processor with a different architecture. Um, um, next, please. So there's a lot of information in those two slides here, but I will just shortly say that uh, the RISC-V consists of different extensions, which uh, tells you what uh, kind of support is available in the processor. Uh, so we, you can look at our homepage to see what kind of extensions we provide. Those are listed to the left and the, those to the right are under development. So as you see, the hardware hypervisor support is being currently being uh, developed and, and tested in our lab. 
Um, but uh, the other ones are available and we support user mode and machine mode. And uh, with the MMU, we also support the uh, supervisor mode. Uh, next, please. Uh, this is just for a reference. So next, please. Uh, as I said before, we also are compliant with the uh, components around the uh, hardware components around the, uh, the RISC V uh, processor itself. So we're compliant with the interrupt controller PLIC standard, for example. We have a debug module, uh, which uh, are compliant with uh, the um, debug specification of RISC V. That means that you can, uh, we hope at least that it will be much easier for uh, third party software solutions uh, debuggers to attach to our device uh, and, the, um, and not only relying on our own uh, solutions. Um, we do provide, a, we have defined a, a couple of uh, configurations um, uh, for the NOEL 5, which you can see on our homepage and the different uh, demonstration bit streams um, demonstrate the uh, parts of these. Thank you, next. Uh, yeah, so uh, in December we released single core versions of uh, the Novel 5 IP and uh, uh, earlier, a couple of week, a weeks ago, we also uh, released a, um, a multi-core uh, bit streams for the Novel 5. And we target three different FPGA boards and similar to the Leon 5, you can use this with uh, the evaluation license of uh, GRM on our hardware debugger. Um, and uh, the bit streams are pre-compiled um, on uh, which you can download from our homepage following those links. But it's also available in free uh, in the free uh, GPL version of GLib, similar to Leon 5. So you can uh, cust um, uh, well, download and do a custom system as well. Okay, thank you. Yeah, okay, the software. Uh, so there's a comparison between the Leon and Noel 5 um, software ecosystem here. And um, basically the Noel 5, um, since it's RISC-V com compatible, then uh, the software ecosystem is a bit more immature, uh, but it's also evolving uh, very fast. So, and we do not have components that are uh, flight, uh, components yet so we try to stick with uh, an update to the um, uh, to new versions all the time whereas on the Leon we uh, we try to accommodate uh, the aerospace um, uh, users where we try to provide stable uh, stable versions so it's a bit of a different uh, uh, well software offering but uh, in general, uh, I mean, we offer a bare metal CNC++ chain. We provide RTEMS, Linux, and VxWorks, uh, the latest versions of, of VxWorks, for example, and RTEMS um, support for both. And uh, we also have, uh, just recently, we also released the Cipher um, support uh, for our Leon. Uh, and Martin, my colleague, will present that tomorrow. Um, on the Noel 5, you can get that by contacting us. We have simulators on the Leon to allow software qualification efforts on, on the Leon uh, to collect uh, code coverage, etc. Whereas on uh, the Noel 5 platform, you, you rely on third parties. Germon works in both cases for hardware debugging. We have a, a, a slightly different uh, offering in uh, in uh, bootloaders, um, we also we provide uh, both open source and uh, flight qualified software for, for Leon. And uh, for Noel 5, we do not currently offer anything. Uh, hypervisors, uh, we work through partners to that provide uh, hypervisors for Leon. And uh, on the Noel 5, we are in, involved in EU activities where those will be developed. Yes, next please. Uh, most of our components, if not all, 
except the 716, you can pick and mix or pick and select what software components to use. But the 716 doesn't have MNU and it's a smaller memory and so on. So uh, we only support the uh, uh, smaller environments there, Zephyr, uh, for example, and um, the BCC uh, bare metal environment. And there are also reduced costs for those licenses uh, for GM on and TSIM. Next, please. So usually when I present at Flight Software, I usually have a slide on updates, recent updates on the software side. So this year, well, last year, 2020, we have seen updates on the Artemis 5. As Joel said, uh, now SMP, uh, the SMP support of Artemis is uh, in production state, which means, uh, well, it's a really good thing for our multi-core devices the dual core 712 and the quad core 740. That's a, a really important step forward for us. And um, we have just, we are just uh, in the process of upstreaming the NOAA 5 BSB for items. Similarly, we have completed the NOAA 5 BSB in the latest version of the XWorks. And we also released NOAA, uh, I mean, uh, Leon support for, for the, uh, the XWorks. Um, SR uh, OC 650 recently. Uh, Cipher will be presented tomorrow, but it's upstreamed and available for the Leon 3 and 716. And we also did major updates on Linux. Um, um, uh, where we updated the toolchain and, and uh, glibc uh, and uh, provide UT 700 uh, ROTAS workarounds uh, on both kernel, uh, glibc, and, uh, and toolchain. So now all of our latest uh, software environments are now available with the uh, GCC 10. Uh, and also we released uh, the RISC-5 uh, uh, support in, in GRMO Professional last year. Uh, next, please. Uh, if you want to try out our terms on uh, RISC-5, uh, why not pick the Node 5? I think it's an excellent platform. Um, you can download uh, from us. It's the same links and provide uh, same links as provided in the other slides. As I, and as I said, the GRMON evaluation version goes with those without license. So you can try it out and then you can uh, either follow the quick start guide on our homepage to get the binary package of Artems. Uh, or you can uh, follow that link uh, on the ticket there to see the, the latest patches for uh, the Artem's master, what will become Artem 6, uh, and download uh, uh, and execute and debug Artem's on, on, on the Nova 5. Next, please. So I will talk a bit about the process and models and uh, well, you can see the NOAA 5 and Leon 5 uh, being developed right now, and that will be followed by full torrent versions. I think it's important to say also that uh, even though the Leon 4 is replaced by the Leon 5, because the Leon 5 is uh, our most high performance machine at the moment in the Leon series, uh, we, we will still support Leon 3, 4 and 5 uh, software ecosystem because they are uh, software compatible with each other. And the Leon 3 we will continue to maintain uh, the IP uh, because uh, we think it's an excellent FPGA architecture. Uh, well, it's an uh, excellent architecture for FPGAs, I mean. Uh, next, please. Uh, on the component side, there's also a similar roadmap where um, we are, uh, you can see what is already available, um, but uh, we are, uh, making available the plastic version of the 740 at the moment. And then we are developing the 716B, which is an upgrade from the 716A microcontroller. And then uh, we also just started a 765ES uh, uh, and thereby also the 765. And we are working on the architecture for a new component based on RISC-V. Next, please. So we have just developed and it's sent from our manufacturing, uh, the plastic version of the 740. So if you want to have more information, please contact us. Next, please. 
Uh, so this is our latest ESA microcontroller uh, that is being taped out this year. Next, please. Here we see a couple of uh, updates uh, if you compare with the other one. But the major ones is that it will have uh, above, uh, well, it's about twice the speed uh, frequency of the previous one. It will also feature a FPGA scrubber which means that you can connect it to a Silent Sulfur Scale, for example, and use the Select Map interface to program or scrub the FPGA uh, in flight. So that's a special mode we should use that for, but uh, there are also uh, other improvements such as uh, Spaceway Router now, so you can uh, couple or put them in a chain, uh, these devices, and uh, Ethernet, um, and CanFD, and, uh, and so on. Next, please. Uh, we are currently developing the 765, uh, which is um, uh, which we have uh, decided to go in steps to de-risk the development. So we have uh, financed uh, we have finance for the uh, the engineering sample activity, and then also for for uh, um, uh, for the uh, uh, well adaptations for the upcoming uh, uh, 765. So you can see here the different uh, thing, uh, the interfaces and other improvements. Uh, most notably, there's a DDR2 and 3 uh, memory interface updates. Uh, that's new. And then there's a NAND flash controller. What we learned from uh, feedback from 740 customers is that they are missing the NAND flash controller interface, so we're adding that. We're also investigating into ha having a FPGA programmable solution on the silicon. Um, and we also, a significant improvement there is the space fiber uh, serial uh, links, high speed serial links, and also the, the, the number of pins that is available is, uh, I don't know, twice or something like that. It's also a full tolerant uh, uh, component. Next, please. One minute left, Daniel. Yep. So this is the engineering sample uh, that we are currently developing. So that's the first step before we uh, will develop, before we manufacture the 765. We will manufacture this one and it will serve as an engineering samples. So we'll, thereby we will make those engineering samples made uh, well, available earlier. Uh, and it's a limited device, but still we'll, you will be able to do a lot with that. Next, please. So uh, the, by using Leon 5, it will be compatible with Leon 4, and we aim for having a software compatible solution to the 740, uh, just adding interface, not removing an, an, uh, anything. Next, please. And then we are working on a EU projects, uh, defining a new architecture for based on risk five for a more higher uh, performance. Next, please. And there we go for plastic first and ceramic later. Next, please. And uh, if you have uh, comments or improvements that you want to, uh, for us to address, it's not too late, please let us know. Uh, and use the, the kiosk, for example, to reach out or the Slack channel to reach out to us and provide feedback on our components. Next, please. And then the last slide. Yeah, please, uh, if you're interested on further updates, please register to the newsletter. And then this, yeah, I, I guess there's a last slide. There's one more. Okay. Um, so, uh, if you have any questions. All right. Um, thanks a lot, Daniel. I, I think we're, um, we're out of time. There were oh, several yeah. questions and I think maybe what I'd like to do if we can, so normally we would copy those over into the talks Slack channel, but uh, Cobham's a sponsor and you have your own um, Slack channel. So what do you say we, we copy all of these right over into the Cobham Slack channel? Yeah, and, sure. Okay. So we'll do that. And, um, and then as Daniel said, uh, we encourage you to, you know, follow up with uh, with our sponsors, in particular at the kiosks. All right, thanks a lot, Daniel.